Hello, it's Michael Watts here, and in this video I'm looking at nail care for the steel string guitarist. This is not the first time I've made a video on the relationship between nail care and quality of sound. The last time I did it, however, was many years ago. That video no longer exists on YouTube. And since then, my own thoughts and process have evolved a great deal uh, across every aspect of the guitar. In particular, I'd like to thank Crystal Gaynor, who interviewed me on the subject of nail care as part of her studies at Berklee College of Music. I really enjoyed our conversation and it did help to solidify uh, some of the more recent ideas I've had about nail care. Certainly horn players, piano players, um, violinists, cello players, people like that. I, I love a smooth, warm, round attack. Mm -hmm. And it was the question of, well, how do you get that with a steel string guitar? Creating a sound is an incredibly intimate and personal process. As acoustic guitarists, we don't have the same immediate physical relationship with the sound we make that singers do. Uh, we use a prosthetic, rather like this one. Ideally, our relationship with this prosthetic interface should be as immediate and transparent as possible. Uh, and one of the ways that we can help this is by coming to it prepared to make music. Rather than go all the way back and walk you through every single step of what is a pretty tedious process, I've spent the past 45 minutes or so uh, getting my nails up to a uh, recording session or concert standard. And I'm going to show you what that involves in a moment, but before I do, I need to stress why this is important. Until I've done this, I don't entirely feel like I'm me playing. Uh, when my nails are set up and ready, I feel like I can express myself fully. I feel like there is a, uh, <laughs> a, a almost a world of opportunity when it comes to different sounds on the guitar, different timbres, uh, lights and shades that I can explore. If my nails are in a state, it feels like that is somehow withheld from me. Before we take a look at my nails in extreme close-up, I wanted to share with you the three S's of nail care for the fingerstyle guitarist. Short, shaped, and shiny. And as you can see, those are three words that accurately describe my nails right now. Short nails are the way forward as far as I'm concerned if you're looking for a warm and expressive attack to your note. The shape of your nails is vital because it'll dictate how or indeed if the string will travel along your fingertip when you attack it. One trick I learned from flamenco guitarists is to put uh, a ramp or angle in the first and second fingernails in one direction and then in the opposite direction on the third finger. The third finger is often your melody finger and having that angle for the string to pass over uh, gives you a, a real uh, thick and, uh, and beautiful note which helps you emphasize the melody within the music. As you can see, my thumbnail is also very smooth with a ramped angle in it as well. Oh, and I keep my pinky nail free. Uh, I do use it on occasion, but uh, it's not the main event. Here's a little trick that you might find useful when you are shaping and buffing the nails. Obviously, it's a bit of a tedious process. It helps me to start from the third finger and work inwards. For some reason, it stops me getting bored. I don't know why, but it does. Thumb, of course, you can buff that all day long. Shiny. And shiny just means frictionless. And the less friction we have between nail and string, or indeed in any part of the guitar, the better. In order to achieve the results I'm looking for, I use the following nail care accessories. A nail clipper. This one was made by Frank Provost in Paris, but the only thing I care about is that it's nice and sharp. A glass nail file made here in the UK by Wolfram Slides. <laughs> and a four-way nail buffer. My personal favourites come from Boots the Chemists here in the UK, but I'm sure that there are any number of international alternatives. These are pretty self-explanatory. You've got four discrete stages. One thing to watch out for is that the final stage is right next to 
the roughest stage and it's very easy to take a divot especially out of your thumbnail uh, which is a pity when you've worked so hard this one's a little bit worn now as you can see but i've uh, got a brand new one right there to treat myself to later Ooh. What we're looking for when we buff our nails is to get them as smooth as possible, literally like glass. And this is something I learned from the great Ed Gerhardt, who's a wonderful fingerstyle guitarist from the USA. Check him out if you're not familiar with the name. One of the advantages of this approach to nail care is that it is entirely natural. It's just files and buffers, nothing else. You're not sticking anything under the nail like you would with ping pong balls, uh, or on top of the nail like you would with acrylics. And frankly, the idea of that really kind of freaks me out. I've heard some horror stories and, and I know uh, friends of mine who've suffered from nail degradation due to prolonged use of things like uh, silk wraps and, uh, and acrylic nails. You know, every time you remove them, they cause damage uh, and they, they're really susceptible to things like fungal infections. Ugh. So, no keep it natural. It's no exaggeration to say that my approach to nail care has had a vital role to play when it comes to specking out custom instruments as well. I've found that guitars with spruce tops uh, that are lightly braced give me the headroom, colour and dynamics that really work with short, shaped, shiny nails. In addition, I found that drier woods on the back and sides, such as maple and mahogany, really do work for me. As I said at the beginning of this video, creating a sound is an intensely uh, personal and intimate process, and so is an acoustic guitarist's nail care regime. Now, you may have prepared your own accessories right now and be sitting in anticipation of the sort of video that you might like to watch while you do your nails. If that's the case, I'm going to share with you some wise words from the Spanish composer, guitarist, and one of the leading teachers of classical guitar of his day, Emilio Pujol. Of the known instruments, surely none has offered greater material for controversy than the guitar. This is chiefly on account of the possibility of plucking the strings in two distinct ways, either with the nails or with the fleshy part of the fingertip. The sound differs according to the technique used, and as it is not practicable for the same set of fingers to use two techniques, the player must make a choice. Hence the dilemma. From the most ancient times to the present day, the dilemma of sound has been the cause of impassioned controversy. To the guitarist, the question of sound is as important as an article of faith to a moralist. It is interesting to note that the aesthetic sentiment, intuitive almost in every case, inherent in every partisan of a particular timbre, reveals to a great extent his own personality, for whatever choice is made, it implies a diverging mental standpoint, leading sometimes to diametrically opposed conclusions. The sound of the string depends on 1. the manner of attacking it, 2. the spot where it is attacked, and 3. its diameter, tension, and elasticity. As the nail is a body with a hard surface of varying thickness and consistency, its impulsion gives the string a penetrating brilliance of timbre, somewhat metallic but restricted in amplitude. The sound produced by the impulsion of the fingertips, i.e. by a soft body subtly sensitive and of greater thickness and surface than the edge of the nails, yields a distinct timbre of greater volume, sweetness, fullness and purity. This may be tested by attacking the string with a hard medium such as the nail or a plectrum and it will be noticed that a sharp and metallic sound is the result. If we listen with due attention we can hear a number of high notes above the principal sound. If now we strike the same string with the fingertip these notes cease and the resulting sound is not so brilliant but sweeter and fuller. Our preferences must take into account that as sound serves music, so does music serve the spirit, which is subject to the constant evolution of life. Just a little bit shinier. Now, outside of the context of the guitar, all we really have here is a rather nice manicure. So I'm going to pick up my instrument and show you how some of these ideas work in practice. One context where this approach to nail care really helps is with rest strokes and nail return techniques. So here's a rest stroke on the G string. You can hear just how fat and full that is. 
and that's because the string has followed the whole of the tip of my finger as I push down and the finger comes to rest on the string above. Now sometimes you might want to follow that up with a nail return and you do that simply by flicking outwards, catching the string with the top of your nail, like that. And what you'll notice is that we get two very distinct timbres to that same note. And that's something that I find very musical and very inspiring. I use it quite a bit. Now when it comes to the use of the thumb in my playing, uh, nail care is absolutely vital. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't wear a thumb pick. Um, you know, sometimes I might crave the extra volume, but I find that my ability to play expressively and use different attacks is really hampered if I've got a pick on my thumb. I'll show you what I mean. So I want to be able to go from the softest, fattest depths. to something metallic. Very often within the same phrase. So in that example, my third finger is playing closer to the bridge, more uh, ponticello, if you're getting all uh, classical and technical, whereas my thumb is playing closer to the fingerboard. So that gives me, within that one chord, uh, a fairly uh, full and supportive bass and a far more articulate and metallic treble. as well. <laughs> we'll have a look at that in another video. But it's not just the thumb. This approach allows me to pull a lot of different textures out of my guitar.
You know, it's funny, a lot of the effort that I put into this in the early days stemmed directly from having a live sound that I wasn't happy with. Uh, a combination of um, under saddle piezo pickups and uh, perhaps sometimes, you know, PAs or sound engineers that didn't really work for what I was trying to do meant that I tried to be as self-sufficient as possible to make uh, the quality of sound as uh, expressive as possible at source. Um, and when I think back, yeah, it's it's very much been a case of trying to get a beautiful and uh, expressive sound when the technology of the time was working against me. Now, of course, things are a lot easier um, since the development of things like the uh, K&K under saddle transducer or the McIntyre feather or, you know, there's so many of these things now. Um, Randazzo uh, pickup systems that sit under the bridge plate of the guitar rather than between the, uh, the saddle and the bridge. Um, that makes life a lot easier. And also I've started taking microphones on stage with me as well. Uh, and that's now an integral part of my life sound. And it really helps when it comes to delivering a, uh, a natural and, and intimate performance. Now, if you found this video interesting, educational or entertaining, please do subscribe to support my channel. The topic of nail care for the fingerstyle guitarist, well, it always creates an interesting dialogue. So drop me a like and a comment telling me what your preferences are and what works for you. Until next time, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.